Good evening, it's Dr. Soloway, um, midweek, here we are, it's uh, I believe Tuesday night, and uh, after a long swim this morning at 4.30 a.m., and a long day in the office, that uh, landed me at the hospital seeing a couple of patients. I just uploaded a photograph to my Facebook um, channel, which I believe goes under the name Steve Soloway. So hopefully you will go to Facebook, Steve Soloway, and you will see two pairs of, I'm sorry, one pair, two feet and ankles with a particular rash. So the rash is palpable purpura. What does the rheumatologist, the medical student, the nurse, the patient, what does everyone need to know about this rash? So everybody will look at the rash and you'll see small red purple um, spots, if you will. They are slightly elevated. You can feel them, hence palpable. And purpura, because they are purplish, reddish um, in color. So therefore the term palpable purpura. So what does a rheumatologist think when they walk past and they are asked to evaluate a patient with palpable purpura. So the first thought in my mind is that they have small vessel vasculitis. Well, what is small vessel vasculitis? Well, it's vasculitis or blood vessel inflammation of the smaller blood vessels. That would be compared to medium or large vessel vasculitis. So I started to explain this to the patient and I explained to him that having small vessel vasculitis was better than having medium or large vessel vasculitis. And he was very lucky that he only had this particular rash on his feet and ankles, and he actually had it on his arms. The reason he was lucky is because, as I explained to him, had the blood vessels been larger, he would not have just had a rash, he would have had big ulcers, non-healing wounds, things that could have become infected. I gave him an example and I explained that if the small vessels in the uh, abdomen are um, inflamed, that you can get bowel wall edema or swelling and you'd have a lot of abdominal pain. However, if you had larger blood vessels inflamed in the GI tract, or abdomen, you would have a bowel infarction and you could die. So the patient understood this very well. So when we look at this, how do we formulate a differential diagnosis? Well, let me tell you about the patient. He was born in 1956, so I think that makes him 62. He's a white male, former alcoholic, um, negative for hepatitis A, B, and C, negative for HIV. Um, a lot of testing that I would typically um, order had not yet been done, but the man had been in the hospital for 13 days. Somebody ordered an ANCA, but did not order an MPO or PR3 by ELISA. So I was not called because of the rash. I was called because the atypical P ANCA was positive. And uh, I'll tell you that the patient had a negative uh, serum drug screen upon admission to the hospital. He apparently has other health problems, including um, congestive heart failure, um, alcoholism. Um, he has a cardiac thrombus. This is going to be important later in my discussion. So I questioned him. He did not have joint pain, and he really had no other features of disease other than the fact it was noted that when he came in, his transaminases or his liver functions were abnormal, and when he came in, his kidney function was not particularly good either. Um, these problems resolved without treatment during the hospitalization. So the first thing, of course, that I wanted to do is I want to get a biopsy, 
and I want to confirm the diagnosis. And it's important to confirm the diagnosis because otherwise you have a working diagnosis as opposed to a proven diagnosis. So this is particularly important in this case. So let me explain the differential diagnosis and let me explain the importance in this particular case. So first, when you deal with small vessel vasculitis or leukocytoclastic vasculitis, and um, that is a biopsy finding, when um, leukocytes or white blood cells are seen infiltrating the um, blood vessel. The um, differential diagnosis starts with primary small vessel vasculitis. This includes henoch schoenlein purpura, now known as IgA vasculitis, hypersensitivity or allergic vasculitis, hypocomplementemic or urticarial vasculitis, cryoglobulinemic vasculitis, and the ANCA vasculitides, MPO or PR3. Uh, MPO antibody is associated with microscopic polyangiitis, Churg-Strauss syndrome, and um, this is now called EGPA or eosinophilic polyangiitis. And the PR3 antibody is uh, what used to be called um, Wegner's granulomatosis. And um, so from this point forward, you have your small vessel vasculitic list or differential diagnosis. So as I explained to the patient, I explained, I said, sir, if you had lupus with this rash, it would mean you have lupus vasculitis and the lupus would need to be treated more aggressively. And I went on to give him the same explanation for sarcoidosis, Crohn's disease. I went on to tell him that if he had a cancer such as a lymphoma with an uncontrolled vasculitis, that his cancer would need to be treated rather than just addressing the skin rash and all the other things that can be seen in this scenario. So what was interesting in this patient, now I don't claim that this is going to be an encyclopedic vasculitis lecture, so I'm going to skip to the one uh, differential diagnostic possibility that actually makes some sense in this patient other than the primary diseases. And uh, for the record, since he's an alcoholic um, and prone to hypergamma globulinemia and elevated IgA levels, he would not be a bad fit for IgA vasculitis. Um, there are many other things to consider. However, I'm going to skip directly to the other differential diagnostic possibility, and that is the term pseudovasculitis. So vasculitis means the blood vessel itself is primarily inflamed. In pseudovasculitis, and this patient does have a cardiac thrombus or a big clot in the heart. So if the big clot in the heart were to dislodge small pieces and they would go to blood vessels in the hands and feet, you might see the same type of rash. You might also see the same type of blood tests with acute phase reactants elevated, um, not too different than cholesterol emboli seen as a pseudovasculitic problem uh, following cardiac cath. So at this point in time, we're dealing with small vessel vasculitis. Our differential diagnosis is primary diseases, which were discussed, secondary diseases, which are alluded to, and in this gentleman's case, the possibility of pseudovasculitis from a uh, thrombus in the heart. No different than one would find if they read about the systemic features of atrial myxoma. That ends tonight's first case that was extremely interesting. And again, please go to my Facebook page, Steve Soloway, and please look for the photograph of the feet and ankles that were downloaded this evening that coincide with this lecture. If anyone can give suggestions how I can upload photographs, 
that would be very appreciated. I do this on my own time. I do this to educate people and to help the community. I am a leading expert in the rheumatologic topics, and it's time for me to continue sharing my knowledge with the younger generation of doctors. But I do not have technology savvy, and I cannot always present the information in the fashion I wish. Thank you for listening, and good night.